Well, Limmy has done what Limmy does best and create a stushy online. Um, he uh, has said that basically Edinburgh isn't Scottish, uh, that it is basically an English enclave, a touristy place. And if you want to go to the real Scotland, if you want to find that, you have to go to Shetland. Now, that's a wee bit uh, mischievous, I think, because uh, clearly the Glasgow born comedian uh, who comes, in fact, from Carn Wadrick, which just interestingly is an anagram for uh, rancid craw. But anyway, um, Glasgow and Edinburgh obviously have been jostling since probably time immemorial, definitely the last few centuries, for kind of primacy as 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 focusing the the essence of Scotland. Now, Limmy is at pains to have issued a grovelling apology. He says he loves England, he loves English people, he loves Edinburgh, he recognises it as the capital, but of course it's got everyone talking. And there's plenty precedent. George Wiley, the late great sculptor um, and mischievous man himself, the, the, the man who made the straw locomotive, he was um, asked to think about an artwork for the M8. And uh, he originally suggested an empty candelabra at the Edinburgh end and lit candles at Bailiston. Cheeky Ouija monkey. Uh, clearly, the old saying um, is still in everybody's minds. You'll have had your tea if you turn up in uh, Edinburgh and your tea zoot if you turn out in Glasgow. But the, the horrible truth uh, that maybe folk from both cities need to get their heads round is that the, the average Scot is not from either city. Uh, there is, in the central belt, including those two cities, about 2.4 million people. Um, the population of Scotland is about five and a half. So the average Scot does not live in either place. And of course, is there any curiosity really about whether your tea's out or in, in Dundee, Stirling, Perth, Falkirk, Wick, uh, you, you know, the many, many places that exist beyond the sacred hallows of that M8 corridor. I suspect the, the interest is relatively limited. And it's a shame because obviously these two cities, Edinburgh and Glasgow, have a totally different history, different heritage, but it doesn't kind of make one authentic and the other less authentic. In many ways, actually, Edinburgh contains the very contrast that's at the heart of Scotland, uh, being essentially one of the most British cities, perhaps the only British city in Britain, uh, most English cities being fairly unashamedly English. But um, the, the um, Edinburgh uh, has such a kind of uh, contradiction at its heart, um, typified actually by the difference between the old and the new town. The old town, very mixter maxter, very weaving, all the cow, the coo gate, all those parts of Edinburgh where the bulk of folk lived, still very kind of, if you like, earthy, down market, pretty happening. Then the formal new town set up and, and created after Culloden and look at the, the place names. They kind of give the game away quite considerably. Um, it's a Georgian city. They won. The Hanoverians won. <laughs> and, and you know it by just looking at the place names. George Street, Charlotte Street, Hanover Street, Queen Street. I mean, the new town is essentially the post Culloden British settlement that Scotland has been forced to accept uh, these last two and a half hundred years. So, of course, it's a different kind of place, um, but it's Scottish for all that. And in many ways, it kind of represents the, the turmoil, if you like, that, that exists for, for most Scots having to hold these two parts of their identity together. I know myself when I'm going about the place and doing gigs that there's definitely a kind of east-west coast divide in Scotland. The west is definitely a lot friskier, it is more embracing, it's funnier, it's more in your face, it's quicker thinking, it's more connected. I think that's all true. Um, I do live on the east coast. My mother came from Wick and Caithness, my dad came from Bampshire. I suppose we are East Coast buddies. And whilst I can kind of pass muster on uh, in the West, I hope, um, the East Coast has got a, maybe a slightly more reserved temperament. That is Scottish too. So I wonder if we could actually just get to the point of realising that the diversity of Scotland is its absolutely strongest point. I mean, Hugh McDermott, 
wrote wrote this in a in a poem at Scotland, small. Um, our multiform, our infinite Scotland, small. And to kind of paraphrase that thought, you know, our multiform Scotland reduced to a wrangle about whether the essential Scotland is at either end of the M8. Come on, come on. So if uh, Lemmy has done nothing else, it would be great if he had actually just sparked a wee thought that there is no one place in Scotland that kind of holds the key to the whole of it. And, and that aspect of it is the bit that people who visit this country love most. And surely one day, rather than trying to trump one another for who's really got the essential Scotland in their midst, we could just really learn to kind of love one another a little bit. And as for Lemmy, well, although he's daft Lemmy on Twitter, he's not that daft. He's doing a live stream at the moment practically every day. And has he got more of an audience after all of this? You bet.